Okay, well, hello, hello. Here we are again. We are continuing with some uh, damn battle royale casting here. Uh, I know a lot of you have been uh, overwatching the set, the live set being casted on Pride's channel by uh, From Kev and uh, Sokol. It was an interesting set as well. Uh, I was kind of delayed watching a bit of it myself. I was really interested in how that will go. Uh, although it is a different uh, group and different a bracket or league rather from what we are going to be seeing here but it was definitely <coughs> a pleasure watching that one as well uh, for us here now uh, we are going to be doing uh, the uh, silver league matchup uh, from group c between humble lord or punisher or zero minus one or marine lord however you may know him of the many names he goes by and fizzy blue or panda guy as well <coughs> so we got two guys with uh, plenty of nicknames here uh, going up against each other in uh, group c and uh, of course i have it already prepped up for you all and uh, just an update on the elos first so humble lord is actually at 1271 elo right now and fizzy blue is at 1100 so there is a bit of an elo difference but uh, anybody who knows humble know that he's been grinding it out a bit recently so he has been uh, climbing that elo and uh, at the time of sign up he was basically 250 elo below where he is right now and that was with him even being at his highest at that point so some very nice grind happening by him and uh, we've seen a very very interesting game with some very nice clips from him in the last round when he played gardo so we'll see how it goes this time around as well now Fizzy Blue is somebody who's uh, who could have seen a, a lot around our uh, casts and in the den as well. Or uh, somebody who started streaming recently himself, so do give him a check out as well. Very, very cool guy. Uh, also a very good player as well, so I'm expecting this to be a great set overall. <coughs> and without delaying this a lot further, and I know we'll probably have some people uh, joining uh, over as well. Uh, from the pride stream we're gonna be going into the map graphs themselves yep so as i said without further ado let's actually get started with the uh <coughs> oh, sorry with these uh, map drafts themselves so the way it's starting off is so Kocha banned out by Panda Guy right away or Fizzy Blue. Uh, not not thrilled to see that. You know my opinion on Sokotra as being the best possible map in the game. But what can you do? I'm getting used to it that people will sometimes ban it. I'm uh, never a fan of seeing it, but it does happen. And uh, Marine Lord, this is something we've seen from him before as well. Marine's go Marine Lord gonna be leaving it to the uh, random uh, or admin picks for his maps as well so mediterranean picked as the home map for fizzy blue here and marine lord again leaving that on the random decision and getting crater lake here and now we are also getting pacific islands as the final pick here so pacific islands is going to be where the first game is going to be played out very very interesting to see uh, it is a very cool map it is a very hard map to play as well so that's something to keep in mind here. Um, kind of hard to get used to it. I didn't try playing it yet myself, especially because of after casting it, seeing how difficult it can be. It's kind of an undertaking to, to, to try out. You definitely need some preparation to play that map. So it's going to be interesting to see how both of them adjust and handle that map as well. <coughs> and let's move over to the save drafts and let's see what that looked like as well. So it's uh, in terms of bans, it was the Armenians banned by Pandagai first and Marine Lord responding with the Italians and the Persians. Oh, Pride, thank you for the raid. Here we go. Uh, we are uh, ready to start the first set here as well. <coughs> <coughs> Low Elo Legion dropped gifted subs and you still didn't get one. Ah, uh, yeah, I had to leave, but to be fair. Oh, Chopsticks, thank you for the follow. Much appreciated. 
probably told me to give you some subs as well. <laughs> That's nice from him. But yeah, I honestly ended up like, buying a, a sub from, from Pride myself. And thank you, Neo, for the gifted sub. Much appreciated. Uh, welcome aboard, everyone. Uh, now that you're here as well, I'll just quickly... So, final ban here, Malay. Okay, Low Willow Legion, really, with the... Uh, indeed does give some subs here. Much appreciated, Circle. Thank you a lot. Uh, yep. We have a limited time to an exclusive emotes, as it says here. Okay, Hype Train is on as well. I think that's that's definitely a first year on the stream. That's definitely a first year to be happening on the stream. So much appreciated their voice as well. And since you're all here now as well, I'll just quickly take you back to see what the map drafts have looked like as well. So as mentioned uh, before, Marine Lord likes doing this thing of leaving it up to the random drafts uh, to see uh, what maps he gets. Sometimes he does it for the sieves as well. So we get Crater Lake as a pick and African Clearing as a ban. <coughs> 16 bits as well. Thank you very much, Sokol. This is looking this is looking very fun and uh, the <coughs> notification sideboard here for me is uh, going crazy as well. <laughs> yep, sort of sort of neo, that's true as well. <laughs> and uh, yeah, as I said, and Threadcore, thank you for the follow as well. The guys not not stopping so far it seems. <laughs> Either way, as I said, Marine Lord or Humble Lord or Punisher, depending on what you know him as, uh, likes to go with the randoms for the si uh, for the map picks, sometimes for the Sith picks as well. Here we got game one going to be played on Pacific Islands. And back to the map drafts where we were. And uh, also I was on the previous uh, stream as well, uh, together with Pride. Thank you, Neo. Thank you, Neo. Uh, I was on the previous pro set, oh, sorry, previous cast of the set uh, that was played live. Some very interesting games as well. Congrats to Sokol on the win. And uh, Kev, I, I did see you play better than you played here. So I I'm sure you you'll come back from that. You will have a decider against, or the last round matchup will be against uh, likes. Then I do believe the winner there goes through. So that's going to be interesting to see as well. And moving on with the drafts here. Let's see what the Civ picks were for these two guys. So... Panda guy immediately going with the Koreans. <coughs> he needs to believe, like, yep, it's it's between him and likes whoever wins there might go through. So believe in Richard. Yep. <laughs> and then Marine Lord responds with Japanese and Vikings with Panda guy rounding it off with Dravidians. Okay, some very interesting picks here. And let's see what the uh, random or the admin picks, so to say, give them out. Okay, Britain's Poles, Burmese, Bohemians. Khmer and Mongols. Okay, so Fizzy Blue or Panda Guy getting Khmer, Britons and Poles and Marine Lord getting Burmese, Bohemians and Mongols. That's some very strong sieves on both sides. Uh, considering how much people like Bohemians now and Mongols getting getting got <laughs> as the random pick here might be very strong and, and we'll see how that plays out for them. And first And the first one will be actually on Pacific Islands, as we mentioned. So without further ado, let's actually get into uh, game one right away. And as you know, I have already prepped it. So as we said, we are starting off on Pacific Islands here. And the map or the civ picks here are Fizzy Blue playing as the Koreans and Humble Lord playing as the Mongols on Pacific Islands. So is choosing the very strong sieve that he got uh, from the random picks right away. Maybe not exactly on the <coughs> map I would say I was expecting to see them on. But nevertheless that is really uh, really a strong sieve. And uh, gonna expect a strong performance here for Humble Lord. Who as we can see has been great. Uh, has been uh, grinding the ladder recently. Uh, thank you Pride. And uh, I'm glad to see you had a great stream as well. Was really fun watching and uh, great co casting from Jurgen as well, and great casting from you as always. Uh, Jurgen, yes, that, that would work just fine here as well. Uh, give me just one moment. I shall pause here for a second so we can get our co caster in. And I'll make sure you guys can hear him on stream as well. Let's see, where is Jurgen right now? Ok, 
okay i'll jump into streaming one jurgen because i don't see where you are active in so you can join me there and i'll in the meantime make sure that everybody can hear you once you drop in as well okay yeah i don't think i have it actually visible right now finally enough okay can you say something right now just to see if i set it up correctly testing 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 okay there we go you're again uh, continuing his route as the co-caster here very very nice to see thank you for joining in Jurgen. always a pleasure me having you <laughs> place to place <laughs> <laughs> and yeah we had the first hype train on the on the streams as well right now that that's always a nice milestone yep the first of many hopefully <clears throat> and let's see so overall uh, what do you think of the matchup here Jurgen? Ah, uh, this is going to be a fun game, not gonna <laughs> lie. But uh, seeing Mongols and water is not exactly something I'm used to. Yep, very true. In that regard, Fizzy Blue probably has the better sieve. But then again, he, as I said, Punisher did get the Mongols on the on the random picks, and you kind of don't want to miss that when it happens as well. It should be interesting. It's a, I think this is a very hard map to play. I, I've been reluctant to do it myself. This was the one that I banned out in the set that I played so far. Just not, to not risk it so far. But we shall see. Yeah. It's not a true hybrid map. That's the problem. Yeah. That's, uh, I like to call it migration with extra steps. That's basically... Yeah, and also, this is the map where we see SS Gold Roger. <laughs> very true as well uh, I will slightly uh, speed up here on the start uh, as we're not expecting anything crazy to be happening they are uh, divided by water here yep remember the SS gold Roger never forget the hashtag never forget SS gold Roger here both players scouting on the same island already with their scouts so it's kind of interesting how many times we see this same and usually the top island being selected by both players uh, instead of what we would more expect would be maybe be a split between the islands for the players as well. It's a big and advantage yep. to get the largest island, so they're never the same, unfortunately. Humble is on his way up. We are yet to see a click up from Fizzy Blue, so it's gonna be a decent advantage here and could be problematic uh, for Fizzy Blue here, considering that Humble might be able to get uh, fire ships out very soon here but he's only on one one dock right now okay we have the first one queued up and right about the time fizzy blue is in feudal age we will return to normal speed and he will be out and about with his fire ship and there we have it but two docks on the other side for fizzy blue and he's immediately going for two galleys that's interesting to see oh hello yep. binny as well we have seen uh, that galley play a lot since uh, it is so good to harass the island yep. if you win water with them. Yep, but does make you a bit more invested into having to win the water by uh, good micro. It's a bit less micro intensive to send out some fire ships okay. at the galleys. That's for sure. So, okay, and we are seeing um, a landing, mm -hmm. semi decent one. Yep. But again, we are seeing the same thing. Look at them both landing on the same island. And uh, Humble is already there with some archers, but immediately dropping a tower for Fizzy Blue might be great against those archers, since he's not yet noticed here. That but fire I'm ship killing SS Gold Roger. <coughs> it's yep. a, a horrible thing not to be able to get villagers off your home island. Yep, very true. I mean, you can always build another uh, transport ship, but it's a bit of an investment and uh, yeah not ideal for the fishing of fizzy blue either he has a nice fishing eco but they're all on shore fish here did not send them to the sides where there's more deep deep fish or any deep fish so to say but again i'm really surprised to see that every time the player decide that they prefer this northern island where, where they end up running into each other right away
Okay, and the fishing economy of Humble is getting hit here by the by the galleys. Uh, he's not reacting really in time for this, and that's already three eco kills for Fizzy Blue, and he has a five eco lead right now. So that's nicely played for him. And Humble really with only the one fire galley up against six galleys already is not a prospect he should be looking forward to at this point. Again, the galleys are very good at sniping fishing ships. Yep. Although we do not see uh, fetching from uh, Fizzy Blue. Yep. With that large investment in galleys, I would have expected to see that by now. Yep. But as you mentioned, you see these villagers already having to move from where, where they were because they were already getting hit by these galleys here. So it's not the greatest positions, greatest off positions to be in for uh, Punisher here. Punisher with zero on food right now. I don't think that was the plan originally and he might even lose a villager here. Okay, now the villagers are mad and that might be the last of the scout, but nope, it gets away. Oy, oy. Uh, the dog here getting hit by this fire galley and look at this. Humble has decided to land his archers on the starting Ooh, island of Fizzy Blue, is, uh, who is also blessed by pride. Really good <coughs> and really bad. Yep, okay, immediately getting a kill, getting another one. Oh my god, no, Fizzy Blue had to cancel Loom because he was late to Feudal. Mm. And now we are getting no. three kills right away by these archers. Who have Fletching already as well. Now we have Loom and for some reason Fizzy Blue is dropping a tower here next to a few remaining trees. Instead of the gold here, I think this was a very bad decision here by Fizzy Blue. Yep. We'll pressure. drop another tower here, but this won't go up really. Or not at least for now. Not at least for now here. Still fishing on the shore fish is kind of unfortunate. But it happens. Meanwhile on the main island we are having a market for Humble as well. I'm He's probably thinking castle. But he'll have to abuse the market that's for sure. Because he's still with zero on food. I'm not sure what this build exactly is at this point. Fizzy blue. makes no sense but okay. Yeah, Fizzy Blue missing the buildings, but he's really over investing right now into protecting the main island from these archers. <coughs> oh, it's so easy to overcommit, I'm not gonna yep. lie. Happens to me too. And he's still missing a building, he could click up instantly basically if he dropped down a market now, but he's missing some wood for it. Yep. Also, as a Korean, it's, it's so tempting to go towers, they are so good at the range. Yes, yep, very true. Ridiculous. I mean, these towers protect a lot here. And it's making it hard for the archers to move around, but they're not protecting a lot in terms of resources, mostly in terms of space. And I don't like this from Fizzy Blue it either. He moved landing, all his galleys losing away. The fish. Losing the fish is not a good option. Yep, he won the water very heavily, but he's losing all the fishing ships now because his galleys are just standing in the corner of the base here. And he's gonna just lose them to this one fire ship that was built by Humble. I have to say a lot of weird decisions from both of them early yep. on in the game here. Yep. They are uh, rather high elo, so it's a bit unexpected to see this kind of play. Yep. And now we're gonna have a third watchtower as well here for Fizzy Blue. Are we gonna garrison the watchtower here? Uh, no, we're not. Okay. Now we're bringing the galleys back and uh, we're both going to castle it, but it's gonna be a lot faster for Humble here. No fish left. Absolutely no fish. Yep, both players taken off their fishing ecos. And this is another castle for Fizzy Blue. And again, I'm not sure I agree with or understand the placings of these. We'll be able to clear out the archers finally so he can get back well, to it the will economy at the homeland, peace. home island forever though. And you often see a lot of farming eco on the home island uh, later. Um, <coughs> yeah, but I kind of feel like these five towers are a bit of an overinvestment here. <laughs> yeah, that's the understatement of the day. A bit of an overinvestment. Yep. Well, <coughs> uh, again, it's the Koreans. It's not a horrible idea. I'll give him that. Yep. And okay, now we are booming better then. Yep, and we're gonna be on two TCs very soon here for Humble, while Fizzy Blue is yet to reach Castle Age. And once he does, he's still missing a decent amount of wood to be able to drop it. 
He was housed there and he never dropped the house, but instead he got help with the housing population by humble killing his fishing ships. That's an expensive Some nice solution. galley micro going over here to try and get rid of these fire ships chasing. It will work. Yep, it's working so far. We might lose one still. Yes, we do. But we get rid of two fire ships, so that's not too bad right there. And we're probably gonna take care of this fire galley as well. Uh, yes, we will, without losing anything additional. Humble not noticing this in time, which is also understandable. And yeah, this was my concern right away. Seeing how many we invested into these towers on one side. Humble saved up his resources and is now dropping a castle. But what does Busy Blue? He's gonna react no, with a tower no, again. No, no. This tower should work no. actually. There's only four villagers building here. But then he needs to micro that. And he's mm. not really good at <coughs> We need to garrison the tower now. Uh, Fizzy, we need to garrison the tower here. Otherwise, this castle will still go up and we are losing villagers. Why, why, why are we not garrisoning the tower here? Actually, I think the castle will go up because we're not garrisoning in the tower here. Yep. Ooh, it'll be fine. Fizzy Blue says it will be fine. You're making me nervous here. Okay, now That's we garrison ten in. That's dead villagers. And there well, we the go. the single villager have been hit. Not are we gonna get the castle up? Villager. Nope. Uh, we're if not those, getting the uh, castle up. Attack, it should be this is at 99.42% here. 99.42% here. <laughs> uh, according to chat, this is the power play. Um, I mean, Fizzy I was do playing. I believe that's correct. He, he was playing a dangerous game here. Also, I did not notice that we were also having three additional towers on the island we are contesting here as well. And by the way, Humble has enough to drop another castle if he so wishes to. And we're gonna get War Galley upgrade by Fizzy Blue here. But then again, the situation on water is looking a lot better now for Humble now that he has Fire Ship upgrade and that he has six of them on the field as well. And there we have it. Fizzy Blue understanding the situation, realizing he needs a second TC. Does not want to take the contested island, instead will take the <coughs> safer option here. Yep, thank you for the clip, Neo. Definitely a doubt castle. Definitely a doubt castle, and of course you know it. I, of course, have the mod for that. Look at the lore right there. The lore's beautiful face. <laughs> yeah, we definitely need to wall this in. I'm so scared of this. I was scared when it was about to go up. I'm scared now that we are not walling it in as well. I have a slightly longer clip, so you can choose. Yep. Okay, let's see. We have a war galley here that's not in the best of places to be. It really wants to get out away from there, I'm sure. Yeah, now it's getting chased by the fire ships. <coughs> let's see. Not willing that cost in might be the most expensive thing ever for this yep. later. Yep. Okay, now we have on this side this all of the navy from uh, Fizzy Blue hitting the lone f war galleys of Humble, who does prefer the fire ships, it appears. And I do like this from, from Humble. I think the idea is like draw them as much as you can into this corner here because we are sending the fire ships over. So make it harder so for them to micro and get away. I do like uh, this idea. It's a good idea. <coughs> and I have seen this work on this map before. <coughs> but it's too... Yep. Uh, the, the speed difference is too much. Yeah, but it does appear Fizzy Blue uh, is able to get out in time and Humble is not noticing this. I'm loving this because these guys are thinking about so oh. much that it's hard to keep track of. So these kind of things yeah. will happen where they both had a good idea, but they walk this past each other then. This is the reason that Neo is reaching 1400 ELO. He is using a troll move there. Yep, very true. We are. Uh, <laughs> but look at this Humble thinking. Humble thinking, no, I'm not just going to give you one of the islands. And the interesting part is, this space right here I think would be ideal for Humble to drop another castle. And this yep. one would go up for sure. Oh yeah, there's nothing to stop it here. Yep. I'm so worried about this castle still being here. Oh. Okay, Dev with 5 gifted subs as well. Thank you very oh much God. my man. I mean, I, I guess this is to make up for not... <laughs> 
gifting me a sub on Pride's channel. That's all I asked for, one sub on Pride's channel. <laughs> but I guess this works as well, guys. And I bought myself a sub for Pride, so it, it all works out. <laughs> and another gifted sub by Dev as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. This is much appreciated. Of course, Devon is doing exactly Devon things. Someone yep. else dropped five subs to you, the gift subs to you today. So Devon drops six. Yep, definitely. You know what's the funny part as well? If, if we look back to the history of my streams, I believe that Dev has dropped more subs than he did chats. <laughs> I think he has like nah, resubbed that, and gifted subs more often anymore. than he than he has chatted. Uh, and now, yeah, now he's just bragging that he's first again, of course. <laughs> I actually, Devon, usually, both Devon and um, uh, BP Dog is dropping a uh, high in chat every time. Yep. And you are usually so busy setting things up that you miss them. <laughs> they are yeah, very, uh, no, very, Blake, very Blake does drop a high always. Dev drops a high, that, that's all, all, all clear. But yeah, there are lurkers and uh, God knows I love stream lurkers as well. I'm one of those when I work myself. And we had a lot of developments here, so Humble says I'm getting a castle up one way or another, so takes a step back and drops one. And with all the villagers inside, he can literally send them over and, and complete this one as well. And now we're gonna get to a point where it's dangerous that this hasn't been walled in. <coughs> so let's see what the further development will be here. If only it was walled off. Look at this, look at this, what's gonna happen? Five hits. This should have been walled off ages ago. Ooh, Humble really with a huge advantage in this game. And he's on both islands. He controls the seas now as well. I don't see a way for Fizzy, Black, uh, Fizzy Blue back into this game. I like the idea of the towers with the Koreans, but I think this was an overinvestment. And yep. also not the greatest of placements when it comes to these uh, towers that went up for Fizzy Blue on his starting island. But to be totally honest, the loss of SS Gold Roger early, that he couldn't shuttle yep. more villagers, that was uh, the game ending uh, thing. Yeah, but I think even when the when the, those archers landed, I think there was a few different approaches he could take to, yep. to stop he that. Even if, uh, he could actually have fought him with villagers. <coughs> They didn't I didn't mean, have any upgrades right then. Yeah, like we have six towers here. And honestly, I think he could have done fine with like two or eventually three. Because he had what? Gold, stone and wood. Yeah. He could have just protected those three resources with towers. And he would have been fine from those archers. I think that was a bit of an overinvestment. And yeah, definitely walling in this tower would have made a world of difference. But now we are completely evacuating. And dropping another TC on this northern island. But here's what I mentioned. Remember I said it before, we might get castle dropped on this island as well. And this is an ideal position just between the two TCs for Humble. And Humble did not invest into towers, so he had a lot of the resources to keep dropping these castles here. Yep. Casting Kev is hard work, exactly. Exactly. It's... Kind of strange, it was kind of strange watching Kev last game as well, I have to admit. Because there's a lot of things he's been doing that, that have been wrong and that we just, like, knowing Kev, like, we know he knows these things. So yeah. it gets kind of weird seeing him do them. Not seeing that siege uh, made me go mental, not gonna lie. Yeah. Okay, at least he's moving the villagers. And look at this, Humble even deciding, I might as well even really fight this. Does not care at all. <coughs> well, look at the eco difference. This is yeah. look at this, this is over. Difference. This really should I be over. I don't understand why he's playing on, on, to be honest. Honestly, the only way back I would see for Fizzy Blue is if he turned into the Bulgarians, dropped a single crap post, <laughs> and went on to get 300 <laughs> eco kills. Now, you might call it impossible, but I have casted it. <laughs> so... <laughs> And in the spirit of the game so far, and the set so far that is, we have another guard tower here by Fizzy Blue, but immediately with the Mangonel here is a Humble Lord. And this Mangonel might as well be, if I'm not mistaken, the only land unit we've seen built by other player. Okay, no, mista my mistake, there were the archers early on. But we've not seen Fizzy Blue, I think, build a single land unit. He has the starting scout and that's about it.
Yep. Uh, yeah, it, yeah I, that's understandable. Kronk as well get get gets to all of us. This is a. Uh, not the easiest of games to to understand to play and to cast as well a lot goes into it but that's what makes it fun nice hit here by the mangonel as well yep. <laughs> i needed a few breaks yeah fair enough <laughs> okay so again i'm not seeing just like Jurgen, I think you agree with me here, but I don't see an alleyway back into the game for Fizzy Blue. This I one small what part. Playing on. Yeah. This makes no sense. To me. This one part. Yes, of I know the it's a tournament North game. Island. But yeah. But now we're gonna castle drop the final DC of Fizzy Blue as well. I think once this goes up, Fizzy Blue is just gonna call it. I think that's about it that we're supposed to be seeing here. Uh, we nearly tried another. Okay, we're gonna try another tower here. The Mangonel does go down at least. But we're gonna try another guard tower for Fizzy Blue. Yeah, it, as you say, it is a tournament game, so he does not want to call it too early or give up that easy. But I don't think... Uh, yeah, I, there's too many villagers building this. Even if the guard tower was instantly garrisoned this time around. Which it is not again. <laughs> okay, now it is. But this one goes up for sure. Yeah, <laughs> and then this one doesn't go up at all. And at this point, I think we might be seeing the GG from Fizzy Blue get gold. And it should be a 1-0 lead for Humbleur here. Who has it's been so playing so amazing so far in the tournament. It's so strange. <laughs> Fizzy Blue won water. Had he just simply kept his fishing eco, he would have won. Yeah. Two um, single um, galleys at home and he would have won the game. There, there were so many times when the archers were moving around. The two galleys could have decimated them. Yep. He's trying to get back on water here, having a fight, but it's too little too late here. How is this villager walking here? What? Okay, there's a small portion of land here. Okay, that was amazing. For a moment there, I was like, kind of, this man is divine. <laughs> kind of. Yeah, kind of divine here, but yeah. <coughs> yeah, we're basically new. We're basically only at like three yeah. times the villagers. That's not yeah, that's a point where I call it for sure. Neil Anderson, what are you talking about? This is rookie numbers. Yeah. I managed 178 in the tournament. Yep, I casted that one as well. Something about the villagers <laughs> and, and, and insane things about them keeps happening when I cast when I cast games. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Fizzy, that, that can be really difficult. Uh, mm. As I said, I think this is one of the hardest maps in the tournament yep. to play unprepared. Or in general, there's a lot of specifics about this map. Uh, it's, it's a tricky one for sure. <coughs> and, uh, okay, so Fizzy Blue, before calling it, is gonna try with the knight on the field. New bandit every set he played. Yep, exactly. I played one set and I banned it right away as well. Not migration, just a special map. Yep, very true. <coughs> I do think it's similar to migration, but it has more to it, and I think it's uh, it's harder than migration to play. And uh, humble, gonna add in the imperial age just for good measure as well. And gonna add some mango die just so we get to see them because they're a very cool unit where they are here they are the KP KP mounted boys very cool to see <coughs> uh, yeah you're gonna we don't talk about bogland we don't talk about bogland on the stream <laughs> it's <laughs> <laughs> ah, it was not your fault <coughs> uh, unfortunately uh, chat I have to admit that the map rules we are going to see tomorrow in that uh, two versus two admin game it's good yep I, 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 there is none of the maps mm. i truly 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 hate yeah and, and while, while we wait for the closure of this game that's that's a good opportunity to mention it and and s tell it to people that do be sure to tune in to jurgen stream tomorrow because we're gonna have a very special review of the upcoming playoff maps as well in a 2v2 fashion and it's gonna be played out between yours truly the admins of the great dan battle royale tournament 
uh, in groups of two. So myself and Pride, who most of you arrived here from, are gonna be playing against Neo and Likest. The two beautiful people from Chile and uh, the UK, less respectively. <laughs> no, this was not a jab at Neo, just at the United Kingdom. Just to make it clear, I don't always jab at Neo, I do always jab at the UK. Unfortunately, uh, Neo has been training today and you have been casting, so uh, <laughs> I, I fear this. Oh, don't worry. I, I feel like at this point and, and where I'm at with the game right now, uh, I could have been training enormously today and it still be the same result. So I need a few more things aside from just getting some practice in to beat Neo at this point. Yep. The man is a complete and utter beast at this moment and uh, if he wasn't my friend, I'd be scared of him. I'm scared of him just less because he's my friend. <coughs> The new Elo heart today, nice, nice as well. <laughs> yeah, also, like, I don't think anybody's gonna be playing standard tomorrow. And Fizzy Blue does call the GG here. Fizzy Blue does call the GG, so it's 1 0 Humble Lord here. Are you kidding me? Look at the Elo of Neo. What? Neo is, four, Neo is 1466. Yeah, Neo, I, I'm not sure. We're getting at a point where we might have to throw you out the tournament. <laughs> it's <laughs> dangerously close to you having to graciously step down from where you are at. <laughs> but that's some yeah. amazing, amazing that was results. A little, little bit late if you say <laughs> GG right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kev, uh, again, there's a lot of things that go into it and a lot of things that, that need to be understood so the matchups were made after the signups were completed and we can't stop people from grinding or practicing the game out in the in between we can't also stop people from practicing the maps themselves and in some cases it was obvious that for example in the set i watched from you just now i think sokol had a better understanding of the of the maps as well it, it's not just like the playstyle itself but for example, on low land, I think you overinvested into into TCs on the top part early on. But then again, I, I don't want to get into too much of that yep. right now. However, we do need to go into be going into game two here very soon. So let's just mark it as a Mongol win for Marine Lord and a Korean loss for Panda Guy. And now it's interesting to see we will be going over to the Mediterranean, which is the home map of Panda Guy, and I assume we're gonna be seeing Dravidians here. Which was probably the intended pick for it. But Marine Lord, having both Japanese and Vikings up that are his picks, should be very good for him as well. <coughs> yep. Uh, Kev, uh, I'll just tell you right away. When Marine Lord or Punisher signed up, he was 1042 ELO. And that was his highest elo as well. So his sign up elo was his highest elo. I have looked at his current elo when starting this game. His current elo is 1271. So that's in the space of about two months. So if anything else, I would just say it's really impressive that Marine Lord has basically grinded out around 300 elo in the last three months approximately. And there's nothing we can do in that regard or that we could possibly expect that the player be on a... 100 elo per month basis for three months straight w which is something i want to point out so yeah i do understand how this feels kind of tilted but considering their highest elos and their current elos fizzy blue was basically higher than marine lord when the signups happened when the brackets were happening when the tournament started <coughs> versus Sierra. It was basically, you can correct me if I'm wrong, it was a 1v1v1 but of course you guys tried to team up on Hera basically. Oh yeah, oh yeah, uh, we teamed up. Anything else would have been crazy. Yep. And Hera had so much fun. I actually lost the 22 minutes against Hera. I was proud. Yep. I got to castle. Hmm. Yeah, uh, exactly as Neo says it as well. And that being said, you are heading over to the be right back screen because I will be right back as I load into the next game here. We are, as mentioned, going over to the Mediterranean. 
for our next game. Yeah. I do definitely not go on Twitch. Yeah. And as Neo says it, Kaya's ELO is lower than his tournament ELO, for example. Yeah, that's very true. My tournament ELO from every, all the tournaments I played so far has me around 1100 something, I believe. And I've never been 1100 in, in, in the ranked 1v1s. So it's also about how people treat the, the tournament themselves as well. Yep. And I met people that's 1200 on the ladder, but can't do that in tournaments. Yep, they very just true. get too nervous. <coughs> I played the 1100 in a tournament and yeah. won. Thank you, Fizzy. So. But normally I lose to just about everyone. <laughs> to be uh, well, Kevin is complaining, but look at my sets against Emma and uh, Nostra de Fortier, and Kevin can feel proud. I didn't get out of feudal in one of the games. Okay. So, so Kevin, uh, sorry. So we Feel have information from Fizzy that this is actually game 3, although by s the logic you should have been on, well, on, on not on this one, but that's fair enough, so I'll, I'll take you out and get you back over to game 2. No issues here. <clears throat> Anderson always learns, he is a consultant, he fixes every single problem okay. he faces. So just back to the set at hand, a small correction, so they, they played it out in a bit of a different uh, different order than, than was expected or perhaps should be done. And uh, we are on Crater Lake instead, and as expected it is Javidians versus Vikings in, in the second game here. So here's a... I, I'm gonna take a small break from the conversations about seedings for Jürgen's favorite part where he can complain about Crater Lake and then we can return to anything else. Okay, he gave you a choice. Like, yeah, Fizzy, that, that's fine because a lot of the tournaments do play it out that way and we have nothing against that, especially if it's since it's already play all three and you guys are both fine with it. That's perfectly fine as well. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, it is an Among Us generation. Sorry, sorry for interacting, Jürgen, but Neil is right. <laughs> I love this. But who are we favoring here then? Okay, so I'll, I'll give a bit of insight on something that I might believe might be going on here. Which is that I practiced with Humble Lord back when uh, Warlords for Hera were starting. On a map, not Greater Lake, but on a different water map. And he said he had a while playing against me got a good idea for a fast castle into longboats with the vikings so i can't help but think that uh, maybe humble has practiced it and has a uh, has an idea of a uh, fast castle into into longboats here that if he pulls out well might be very very strong but then again dravidians are very strong water sieve and they do get 200 wood every time they go up an age so that might be even too little too late still even if pulled off well here <coughs> yeah. Also, yeah, Fizzy, uh, I'll be honest, I did not feel from the last game that it was uh, showing in terms of an ELO difference. I think it was uh, uh, showing in terms of uh, map understanding, and I think it did show that you were basically unfamiliar with how Pacific Islands worked or what would be the ideal, so to say, game style or game plan for that map as well. Yep, and then uh, Jurgen, you put it, put put it down pretty nicely. The number one backseater we have in the den is here right now. Also, um, some people might not <laughs> have noticed, but this Ray J has been promoted to admin in the den. As was another great, great den member, the one that we just praised for his elo climbs. He has also it's made some Anderson. administrative climbs as well. I have he butchered that word while saying it now, but you get the point. He is going to the top. And uh, also, Mr. Sin uh, of um, 
Legends of uh, Yuna fame. Uh, no, pro Guardians of Yuna, Jesus, I can't even pronounce the <laughs> names of the, the admins. Uh, he's also been promoted to admin, so uh, this is going to be a very interesting server from now on. <laughs> Very nice to see, and most importantly, we continue uh, growing, and we continue to try to provide, or at least try to provide, a great community for everybody to play tournaments, enjoy games, climb elos, and uh, generally, of course, have some fun and, and get to know each other. This way, Jay, and uh, I have failed even worse. I have now been upgraded to owner <coughs> status. So everyone, be fearful. Guys, we might be we might be getting uh, sold once the medical bills come in for Jurgen. The burns today. The burns. Yeah. It's, it's like, so everybody has to have a bit of faith in the Norwegian government here as well, if we want this to keep going. I asked for a demotion, but uh, didn't get it, so uh, you'll have to live with me. But on the other side, I wonder, did Fizzy Blue ask to be blessed by Pride? Because that's what happened, whether yeah, he asked for it or not. Pride's he will use this time to just go up, actually, so that that's I kind of settles it for now. Pride blesses in live games. Pride blesses a week bef uh, long ago games. Pride's yep. blessings are everywhere. Like, no matter how tired he is, I think he kind of, before bed, he gives out a few blessings and just goes to sleep. And uh, whoever gets casted first picks them up. I it's amazing the power of that man. Aye, 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 aye. Uh, let's see here. So, Fizzy Blue will have a decent advantage here in getting up to, to Feudal Age once more. Again, it's gonna be a bit over a minute, but that's enough for the player uh, to drop at least one or two fire galleys, and he will be on two docks as well, so... Again, same mistake both times from Humble. Humble does not appear to be liking the idea of two dock play, which should be really be kind of required here on, on Crater Lake. Yeah, exactly, Pride. And I was thinking, like, did you go to bed yet or not? But I was thinking if I mention it, he'll probably pop out. <laughs> okay, the scout from Fizzy is getting nice information here. Neither of them actually walling off the sides, which is something we usually see on this map as well. Uh, Pride's always here. Ni nice to hear. Scary for the players. Perfect for me because yeah, I'm getting blessings, which is always fun to point out. Hmm. I think people should be more scared of the blessings. Yep. But uh, what are we seeing here? None of them are doing meta play, that's for sure. Yep, and uh, we see that Fizzy Blue is a big fan of the galleys. Not a big fan of the fire ships, but he does prefer the galley play, it seems. And it did not work out bad for him last time around either. But the game did kind of fizzle out of the control, but out of his control. He, but he won reasons, water sure. and then threw it. Okay, so guys, Pride is asking Kev why he called him weird in game 3. So if you want to have at it, an answer for <laughs> Kev here. <laughs> This is your moment. <laughs> <coughs> and oh, again, yeah. we're gonna have the fishing geek removed or humble here. Vikings with no fishing. It seems a bit yep. concrete. But, but look at this. Humble just needs another building to be dropped down to go yep. to castle. He has the resources. So it might be, as I was mentioning, that he had the idea of that. Uh, Kev, in chat, you, you, you wrote to so-called that pride is weird, for whatever reason. I think the chatting <laughs> destroyed the <laughs> gameplay. <laughs> <laughs> A 
Maybe that's what Sokol wins. He just simply trash talks in his way to the top. Yep, very, very true. I mean, if that also worked, I, sh I, sh I should have some shot against Neo, but that's not happening. To, uh, wha but again, Kevin is talking about unfair matchups. The matchup tomorrow will be. Yeah, I'm asking for a handicap or something. <laughs> Who are you playing? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. At this rate, Jay is 100% correct. No, definitely. Trash talk is the most important skill in life. And who are you playing tomorrow, Jürgen? Tomorrow I am having the joy. I have been uh, granted the privilege, since your admin group is not talking together, of casting you for. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I thought you were playing somebody. That, that's what I meant. That, that's uh, why I no, was no, asking. No, no, no. no. I am having the joy <laughs> of watching you, and I w will ask for a, a handicap for uh, you and your co-player. Uh, no, 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 no. We, we wouldn't accept it. We wouldn't accept it. We're going to make them use Microsoft Paint fair and square. <laughs> yep. Okay, if that's the if, if the price is that big, yeah, you, you yep, might definitely. have to fight for it. And it, it's not going to be like, I don't know if paint is maybe better and more fancy now i'm gonna send them a file of like an old windows 97 paint and that's all they get to use i want to see like yeah paint 98 i want to see neo drawing it out <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> also as we mentioned so humble is in castle is he blue not that far away from it he can abuse the market even if he so wants to but I'm kind of worried that Humble might be a bit too far behind here. Although he did expand to a dock on the side, which might be great for uh, him in this situation. I, I do not think this is a problem. There is not enough scouting here for Fizzy. Yeah. And Fizzy did exactly the same in the last game. It went horribly wrong. Very true. Also, for tomorrow's game, Pride and I do have some ideas and strats we want to try out, so... Neo and Likes did basically volunteer and to be guinea pigs the on the EDOC, EDOC we want to do. And here come There's the long no boats. Chance. There's no <laughs> chance of this going well. Mm. It's too many uh, long ships. Yep. Definitely Fizzy Blue needs to... I mean, he's out of options to do it now, but he needed to pull these back, go into castle himself and try to upgrade them. Because this yep. is not a great fight for him. Okay, nice micro though. That might uh, save him a bit here. Uh... Kevin, uh, would you like to stop by and maybe co-cast one of the oh. games tomorrow? Yeah. Also, uh, seems Humble like is you here. have some beef. <laughs> Humble is here. He says he missed game one. Uh, you won. You won, Humble. Yep. <laughs> I, can <laughs> <actually> enough. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you that much. <laughs> I'm so sorry, everyone. Uh, Again, the casting <laughs> here has been uh, low quality. Yeah. Also, nice micro by Fizzy Blue, and uh, the numbers are still good enough that he's able to, to stay relevant here on, on the water. And he's probably gonna try to snow and save these galleys and increase their numbers by the time he's in castle and gets to upgrade them. So he's definitely gonna stay relevant on, on water for a while here, but yep. Humble is increasing the number of longships, which is very scary. Yeah, the, the longboat has the range advantage and everything. Unfortunately, Fizzy Blue, Covidians, <coughs> cheaper ships, uh, well, stronger ships, so it's not over. Yep. And to be fair, Humble, we can always count on maybe he gets a nice mass of longboats and pulls a Tato oh, again. Oh, but if we can take the fish, the fish is running. Yeah, the fish was Fizzy running for a while here. amazing. But, yep. Doing amazing to save Zico, and he's also gonna expand to a dock on the side, so nice thinking for both of them in that regard. Unfortunately for Fizzy, I think he's taking this fight too soon. I don't think he should have been brought bringing these back just yet. Because the, the, the longboats are enjoying this fight so far. Are we immediately well, going to see the upgrade let's coming get for the, them? But what's yes, it, we are after this war, Kelly. Oh, please. <coughs> just one single uh, demolition raft. Yep. Oh, I thank mean, you, this is great. This is great micro by Fizzy. It's just that he's under, in a very unlucky position here with being with feudal age galleys against longboats here. But look at how well he's taking these fights. Humble just yeah. going with rear vikings, we stand and fight. 
which to be honest is and good. now now here we come here we come with the upgrade in and with the clear up for fizzy boo Ooh. very nicely done very nicely done oh and we have a clip as well thank you pride oh this is well done very very well done and and right now with the numbers on the field as well and with the micro you've seen busy once again has the advantage on the water and to be fair judging by the the way the players are uh, going about it right now the fights on the water uh, is the probably Viking, what we're gonna be seeing the for Viking a long time is not using his range advantage he's too close he just yep. gets sunk i understand what humble probably wants to do knowing that the longboats are the stronger ship in this case but i think he does need to mass up mass up before he tries to do this also the number of docks from fizzy blue is <coughs> getting ridiculous yep he's on four docks right now compared to the two of humble so i think humble's water play needs uh, some more fish. docks into it oh no it missed the fish again you know i i honestly have uh. to say uh, Humble is somebody who always amazes me by the things he knows about the game and by the things he doesn't know about the game. So he's just now saying he had no idea he had the range advantage. Again, some uh, nice micro here by Fizzy Blue. Kevin, you can't <laughs> do anything else until you want water. There's absolutely no reason to do yep. anything else. Eco is about the same, but the water fights, even though we have the longships on the field, are being won so far by Fizzy Blue here. Again, I have to point out that his micro has been great throughout these yep. water fights. But uh, look at the upgrades. Let's check Fizzy Blue's upgrades. He has Bodkin Arrow. He's forgotten that uh, the armor also work. Uh, Archer armor also helps the ships. Mm -hmm. But so did we can't Humble. see the other upgrades they done for the uh, ships, but it should actually be. Much. But it's same same on the other side for Humble here. They have the same upgrades as well in terms of uh, only botkin on both sides. <coughs> ah, ballistics. That's the difference. Oh, he's not yeah. hitting. The longboat is just simply not hitting from the range. Yep. And again, the, look the, at the, the micro from Fizzy Blue. Yeah. Look at the micro from Fizzy Blue. It's a. Uh, He's making it seem like the longboats aren't really that good of a ship. Yep. And now we have the three TCs from Humble, maybe realizing maybe water's not working out. Maybe I need to outboom this to try and get back. We get even a Vili kill from Fizzy Blue here. I think Fizzy Blue just needs... Okay, Fizzy Blue now finds this dock on the side as well. So this might be him completely taking Humble from water. Actually, not for long, because there's another dock being dropped by Humble. I think Fizzy only needs to put one ship on patrol along the coast to be able to find these docks and and stop uh, the constant attempts from Humble to get back and, and win the water fight. <coughs> okay, Fizzy Blue also had no idea armor works on ships. This is perfect and uh, one of the things I love about these journeys, it's definitely a learning curve for everybody. And uh, you guys know it from the cast as well. I know some of these things, I don't know all of them, uh, th there are things that surprise me, there are things I ask of chat as well. So it's always great to, 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 to get a chance to get yourself more familiar with what, what, what could work better as well. Uh, to be fair here, the attack is a blacksmith upgrade. The armor upgrade is something you do in the dock, so that no one is confused there. Yeah, you they did get those upgrades armor. here. They do get those upgrades, so car uh, careening and, and what was the other one called that comes after it. Yep were taken by fizzy blue at least that much i've seen yep. that, that's why i'm just to clarify mm -hmm. um Bodkin arrow the attack upgrade is the same but not the armor upgrade so sorry if yep. I, I said that in a confusing <coughs> and we have villagers going forward here for fizzy blue with enough stone for a castle so uh, i'm really doubtful that this will be a tc here so Let's see where the castle goes. Fizzy Blue realizing it's time to use up the advantage he has mustered yep. on the water. And uh, this is a great, great castle spot. So this DC and the farming eco here will be rendered useless. Not sure if Humble is noticing this right now. Humble, where are the longboats? They are out and about trying to find the fishing ships. Realizing maybe it's better to try and get some eco kills because we're not winning the fight against the war galleys. 
at any point soon. There's 30 war galleys out and about for Humble and they're pretty pissed off at uh, them trying to kill the economy <laughs> here. And uh, yeah, we have poked the bear here. Look at this. This is not, 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 not nice. Very not nice. And the castle will go up here. Humble was able to evacuate the villagers in time, but does he have to give up on this side of his eco here? Yep. Yeah, Fizzy, you so definitely annoying. got the dock armor. I, I saw as much. And uh, I think we now have Humble giving up on the water completely. Don't mess with Panda, Fizzy Blue says. <laughs> And uh, are we gonna see, like, I would actually love to see the Yurumi swordsmen here. They could yeah. run into this eco and do a bunch of damage if we started Ooh. producing them from this castle. Oh, that would be amazing to take that back golden stone. Yep. <coughs> and Fizzy now in the middle as well, and this could be a crucial point and as well. And we see the uh, imp. Yep, the imp is coming in as well. And not looking great for Humble, although Humble understanding that he probably won't have a lot go a lot of gold in the future has stacked up about a Fort Knox amount of gold in his storage and Emma is here as well nice to see you around Tamash Emma has been cheating she's been trained He's I want to see your roomy Uh that's not true Jay I heard myself say it several times so, <laughs> I think they're a cool looking unit, and uh, in many games I play as well, even when they're not the best option, if I feel I'm in a good position, I'm gonna build some of those cool looking unit units, just to have them on the field. I think I'm getting to the point where I'm too tired to actually go cast. I'm saying uh, so much dumb things. <laughs> no, no worries at all, Jürgen. No worries at all. Okay, we are getting the Man at Arms upgrade, but since we are getting the Man at Arms and want to go into infantry, I would suggest the Yurumi Swordsman. Look at that sneak DC back there. It's so beautiful. Yep. Okay, we're gonna have a castle on this side for Humble. <laughs> and uh, after which we might as well kill off these villagers here. Sorry, the but we have sword this rage. Okay, yeah, yep. I, I, I love the naming though, Jay. I have to say I do love the naming. Yeah, aesthetics beats out stats every single time. It's not even close. Yeah. True. <laughs> and we have a man at arms on the field. This. I can't correct me if I'm wrong, but this time this is the first land unit I think we see in the game. Yes. And uh, that guy got promoted to but, long swordsman uh, on the basis oh, of but, you're the only but one. Think about the amount of. Eco <laughs> hidden back <laughs> in that ravine. This game is going to be never ending unless um, PC starts pushing or something. Uh, I'll be honest, Jurgen, this game seems over to me. Yeah, With the position the game uh, Humble is in as well. Then again, yeah. it did take Fizzy Blue a while to sort of call game one. Yeah, but uh, might take Humble I a bit to call game two as well. Yeah, but he has the eco lead, still. Uh, yeah, but he has uh, 79 villagers and five battering uh, rams. On the other side, we have some long swordsmen getting ready. Yeah. That are gonna be two-handed swordsmen soon, or just the one. And we are it's hitting blue. the castle here. Where are these villagers trying to go? Ouch. Oh no, oh no. This guy's gonna have so much fun. Let's just zoom in on this guy because he's gonna having a, a ton of fun. Uh, the castle is gonna go down to these rams though. Not something yeah. Fizzy Blue was expecting or really ready for it this, in this situation. And uh, we have the villagers hitting the castle on this side as well. So I, I think this is good. These are mostly good decisions from Humble. Aside from that, Farming eco that went over into this corner here. <coughs> uh, Fizzy Blue's kind of ignoring the rams here, which I don't think is the best of decisions. Because those are all your production buildings here. But now the swordsmen are taking out the villagers that are trying to kill the castle as well. And that won't take them long. And this is uh, basically war crimes. And Campbell calls it. Campbell calls it, so Fizzy does equalize here. And we are gonna be going to a game 3 that I thought was game 2 that we already loaded into once.
But how do you feel, Kayason? They took away all the times you could see, say, and here's villages dying. Here's villages dying. That is going to be your quote. I need to clip it and put it on my uh, stream deck. <laughs> yeah, I That's love that so one. That's so amazing. I love that one. And you guys all know I love villagers dying. It, it's my favorite thing about them. It's my favorite thing about them, that's for sure. And again, as Fizzy Blue was saying, we do see that the ELO difference here is uh, just a number. And uh, age is just a number. And jail is just a cell. So <laughs> now that that's out of the picture, we can go into game three. That's going to be a decider for this set. And we're going to see who wins it. And it's going to be on a map that can be very similar to this one or can look nothing at all like it because it is Mediterranean and we have no idea what we're going to get from it. So kind of scared, but again, we did see a small glimpse because I loaded in the wrong game. So you're all welcome. And we have the Javidians winning yep. against the Vikings. And we have a horrible, horrible, horrible map. Yeah. And uh, we have Jurgen complaining about the map pool, so everything is as it should be. Not Nothing new here. And I've seen see. comment badly on um, <laughs> Crater Lake a single time this game. I even gave you the space for it. I literally made a special area know, or space I in know. the casting. Like, this is the time where Jurgen complains about but it was fun, and I, I'm seeing Vikings <laughs> losing <laughs> with long boats. So yep. and I, uh, it's I something have... that's never supposed to happen. Yeah. What kind of monster does that? Thank you, Sokol. Thank you, Sokol. I, I like you. I like you more and more now. You did try to trash talk me a bit, but then you ended up beating Kev 0 and now you're defending Sokotra. So you're a good guy after all. So I, I can't. I can't go. Can't. Can't, can't lie. Really. <laughs> And let's uh, let's go with a it's let's go amazing. with a shout out for our boy uh, boy Sokol here as well. He's an amazing caster himself. Yep. Uh, been doing this longer and better than I have been for quite a long time. Sokol is uh, one offline. of the fellow okay. streamers that spends more on this game than he will ever make from it. Yep, very true. Sokotra is Fizzy Blue's nemesis. Okay, I will see you sometime on Sokotra then, Fizzy Blue. And uh, yeah, uh, Sokol, this one's not a live cast. They played this out uh, yesterday. Uh, so we are just, uh, they, are, they are watching along here with us. And this array is gonna guess Japanese versus Poles. And I think it's kind of funny because I loaded in by accident, but I think Jay wasn't there yet. So he might be the only one actually guessing. So let's see. Again, you know how the deal goes. I send you over to the be right back screen while we load in. So you do not get spoiled. And uh, let's see if <coughs> this array Jay was right. And uh, Great job, Disarray J. It's Japanese versus Poles here on the Mediterranean. Could you, could you please? Uh, and there is a small a normal button generation. to press there, sir. You don't get. Oh, that's this is even worse than normal. <coughs> no, no, this is a good, this is a good generation. Yeah, that, that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, sorry, but uh, again. Uh, me complaining about uh, the maps is uh, the main um, fun I've had in this tournament. Uh, this is actually quite um, a good generation, although it's very narrow. Yep, very true. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, here. I, uh, this is very unprofessional of me, but I'm going to pa pause the game just for one second. Because I just need to screenshot the point where Jay is saying, fuck me, and Emma Stonewalls is saying the offer is tempting. That's one for my personal collection here. Don't need a clip of it. <laughs> I need receipts of it. <laughs> and now we can go back to the game here. Sorry. <laughs> so yeah, that that one's definitely saved right there. God, I love chat. <laughs> I love this game. <laughs> yep. 
important and respectful pose. Thank you, Sokol. And Sokol calling it Ponteranian as well is, is quite suitable. He's quite suitable here. Oh, I'm getting complaints uh, about my level of laughing here. <laughs> I had to say it like, guys, in the last set, I don't know if you noticed, but really, whenever Jurgen and Pied laughed at the same time, they, they sort of sounded like Beavis and Butthead. I think Lolilo Legion, you missed it because you were playing, but <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> yeah, global yep. warming yeah. Mediterranean. That's it. That's it. That, that could also maybe be a sub clip. That's decent. <laughs> yeah, we sound quite crazy when we laugh at the same time. <laughs> again, uh, again, I'm going to speed us up just a little tiny bit here while we are just luring in the boars and similar we'll be on the lookout for any possible boar wars the continuation of our clips of boars killing villagers in the den battle royale but i don't think we'll be seeing it here not seeing it on either side it appears so we are safe the humans win <coughs> mind you the mediterranean would get bigger with global warning yeah that's very true so if there was global warming, I'm assuming we would be seeing Crater Lake again. And there we go, boat players going up to Feudal. This time around, we do have Humble going up first. And, uh, but once again, okay, he's gonna be on two docks, maybe slightly, ever so slightly late, but okay, he's gonna be able to drop down. Okay, both it's players in feudal. I'm putting us back at normal speed. It's strange uh, that um, we don't <coughs> see more docks from the Japanese since they have that bonus. Yep. But we can see Humble basically adapting real time here because both of the previous games he did not drop two docks in feudal or as he exits feudal and he did this time around. Uh, I like the quick wall attempt here from Fizzy Blue after the army has left him. <laughs> But fair enough, I, it's respectful still. And uh, blessed by pride are we here for Fizzy Blue. Yep, which means he's still lurking about in the chat here. Oh yeah. And uh, yeah, let's see. So it should be interesting. Again, there's a lot more land on this map. So we do have to keep in mind that the water won't be as important as it was previously. And we might see more investment into... Uh, land fights from both players and interestingly enough all of these games so far the players have firstly went for the opposing players economy and then only for the ships but now uh, humble is gonna be able to clear up these two galleys very shortly and dispose of them but fizzy blue adapting as well and he says i'm going fire galleys as well this time around Yeah, Pride never sent you the custom voice clip that he had, uh, he would for his stream. That's something that needs to be corrected as well. Oh, we have so many mods we need to do. There we go. I'm thinking, is there? I'm not sure, but there might be a hole here. Actually, no, there's a small piece of wood here behind the gate that I think prevents it from being a hole. But the fishing eco from Fizzy Blue might have fished its last fish. And, uh, yeah, Pride, uh, in the future, and especially now that you're admin in the tournament, please do consult us before considering having a life outside of this game. If you told us this before we made you admin, who knows? None of us tried to live outside of the game, so... <laughs> Be mindful. Okay, so the number of uh, ships on the field has equalized. So uh, it's probably going to be a bit about the micro and the timing once they do decide to fight it out. But I'm still interested in seeing will we see land aggression. And it appears that Humble is thinking land aggression and he's thinking archers. So we have one uh, strutting over as we speak as well. But Fizzy Blue might even be walled off on that side by the time he's over and able to do damage if he does not immediately find this hole here. So we will see how it goes from there. 
How dare you not have control? Like, yeah, I've, I've called, like, Kronk, I've called the city management after they said, like, this, this better not happen again. We have some very mad people at the den, which means we're gonna cut funding for the city. So, not gonna uh, happen I, again. I think this Ray <laughs> J can give them better gifts than cut the funding. This Ray J scares me almost as much <laughs> as the <Devon. coughs> Remember, Devon has access to unlimited explosives. Uh, but yeah, but I also just called the mayor and told him, like, if this happens again, I'm making you one rerun Gold Roger. And uh, <laughs> I've had perfect electricity ever since. <laughs> so, there's that. Please and warn me before you do those jokes. I had my mouth full <laughs> of uh, drink. Ay, ay, ay. I mean, you should assume that there's like a... 50-50% chance that something I'm saying is not serious when I start. Also, as we were mentioning, so the archers did not find this hole in time, so Fizzy Blue will be oh able no. to hold this off before the archers can get in, and he will have time to respond and react to this. Meanwhile, again, the bulk of the fighting is on the water here. Where is the farms? Why are you playing poles with no full war? Uh, we are still on the berries for now. But we did place the full work very nicely here, so we will Why? be able to drop the farms around it. <coughs> and actually, Fizzy Blue completely oh. winning out on the water once again. Wow. Even in an even numbers fight, it appears that his water micro is supreme. The Polish Fizzy Blue Navy? Rank supreme. Thanks. Yeah, it's the, it's the famous Polish fire ships. But, 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 Japanese has never lost water in a single war before. <laughs> Ah, uh, well, they never fought the Poles. Uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's actually 100% true. Yeah, and also Fizzy Blue does explain that he didn't want to rush into farms because he needed wood for his ships. Because he also wanted to win water here, and that seems to be working out quite nicely for him so far. Uh, these archers are doing kind of Sisyphus work right here with uh, hitting this palisade and this house as well. It'll get there. Uh, eventually. That's true. Uh, uh, I, Fizzy Blue? Yeah, in, in, but not... Uh, then you don't count Finland. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. I think it's... I'm pretty sure it's Finland. Finland has... Yeah, like in, in Europe, you're proper, yes. In it's Europe uh, proper, yeah. Like, we, we don't count those northern bastards. Well... Right? <laughs> you took a second there, Jürgen. <laughs> I don't know if they're Nordic even. That's true. But they uh, are again, from so the Sorry, Emma, but Hungarians have the same problem. The language uh, isn't related to any European language. Uh, funny fact, Hungarians shares similarities with Finnish. Yeah, th so that's they what are I'm from saying. the same group those, of languages. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The the Finns were those who could handle the cold, and the other ones uh, they went to Hungary. Yep. Okay, we are trying to roll behind this here for Fizzy, but we are also kind of still leaving holes I, here. That's late. That's too late. That's late. And I'm kind of unhappy to see this from Fizzy, considering he had a lot of time to react to these archers here on the side. But it appears that's still not happening here. So we have the army of oh, Humble yep. inside. And Humble is also gonna be in castle in about 30 seconds. Meanwhile, Fizzy Blue missing a building and floating resources, so he's not going up yet. This is a bit sad, to be honest, but there is enough villages to fight this. Now, now talk about Basque. <laughs> yeah, I think Kronk is uh, enjoying all the random uh, geography and culture information we are providing here. Yeah. <coughs> uh, even uh, the uh, Sam Sami people <coughs> in no way uh, is not in the same language group as mm -hmm. uh, the Finns, so. Um, Yep. When it comes to displacement, Finns are uh, world champions. Yep. And Kronk, on that subject, just so you, you think, uh, just you don't think we're gonna miss it out. Oh no, 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 please don't. Uh, the Basques and the Catalonians actually are versions of Spanish that, from people I know that have talked about it, just seem like uncompleted versions of the language. It's not really fully worked out, and they're basically missing cases in the language for it to be fully functional. 
And uh, while I'm saying that, a beautiful thing is happening here. Willies are dying. And that's a lot of idle eco now for Fizzy, who is on his way up, but he's completely disrupted back at home. And uh, Humble is gonna be on his way with Knights as well. Now, this is the second game I'm casting of Humble where I see him go Japanese Knights. Which is, well, if I had a nickel for every time it happened, it would be two nickels, which is not a lot. But it's weird it happened twice. But then again, last game I saw him do it, he won. So let's see if uh, he wins this one as well. He's in a pretty good position even after losing the water here because he was able to get in on land. So speaking of history here, we have the Poles beating Japanese on water, but we have the Japanese knights winning out against the Poles who have no knights on the field. That, 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 that makes no sense. Yeah. Although, Japanese knights historically <coughs> uh, are uh, a very good unit. Yep, very true. Yeah, this is why Mediterranean is not the water map as well. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. I, I just think that Fizzy Blue, uh, you, you had enough time to prepare for this, knowing that he's coming with archers and, and knowing that he's like right there and trying to get in. I think this could have been, this entire situation could have been prevented. And now we have a lot of knights in our base and we are 22 eco down. So it's once again looking like a very hard position for Fizzy Blue to be able to come back from. We did see him rush towards this stone, maybe hoping to get a castle out by the time he is in castle. But that did not happen and he has no way of getting back there now as well. So not the best position for him. He's off gold, he's off, he's off everything pretty much aside from the water right now. Uh, we do have a knight on the field for Fizzy Blue as well. We no longer have a knight for Fizzy Blue on the field. Knights are under the TC as well, doing damage here. They just don't care. Villagers trying to fight them back, but this looks pretty, pretty GG. Yep. Uh, yeah. Ca castle timing and uh, SJ was saying this is not completely a water map, so this definitely had to be something that was taken into account. Fizzy Blue realizing that, that uh, it's pretty much over when you're on 14 villagers in Castle Age. So he does call it here and Humble Lord will be taking this set 2-1. to one. Great games by both of you. Great games. All three games of the set. Amazing play by Humble. Amazing play by Fizzy Blue. Amazing micro for water play for Fizzy Blue. Amazing understanding of, of uh, land pushing in for Humble as well. Very, very nicely played. And uh, Jay playing Devil's Advocate once again. Yeah. He was the chosen one, that's true. <clears throat> yeah. I think that's... this game could have went down for 30 more minutes with like no point whatsoever. And Jay would be the one in chat saying like, Fizzy Blue, you have him now. You don't call it now. 